information in Rome research lives on pages. Now, the content can either be directly on the page or it can show up at the bottom of the page in the linked references. Effectively, if you are somewhere else in your Rome graph and you refer to that page, that will show up in the linked references of a given page. And I'll show you how that page layout looks in just a moment. Let's talk about creating pages first. You can create a page by simply wrapping some text in double brackets. So let's say we're creating a page called new page. Notice I have two brackets on the left, two on the right. And when you type the two on the left, it automatically creates the two on the right. And once I've done that, it changes color indicating it is a new page. If we go there, we can see what I was talking about, about the layout. There's space up here to create content. And then down here in the linked references, you can see where on October 5th, when I recorded this, there is a reference to this new page, the one I just made, where I created the page. So you can see very easily now that we have a new page there. Uh, you can also create new pages with a couple of different reference formats. You can use a hashtag. So if I wanted to create um, a page two, let's say, with a hashtag, now that is also a page. So you can use a hashtag. And, and I did it this way just to show you, um, because if you have to have multiple um, words in a page title, you actually need to also put the double brackets around it. Uh, in order to use it with a hashtag. That's simply because it, it doesn't, you know, spaces will move you <laughs> to the next word if you're typing a hashtag. Um, and you'll notice uh, that hashtags and double brackets style a little bit differently. Uh, for myself, I use double brackets when I'm dealing with an important person or topic or project or something like that. And I use hashtags when it's something logistical, like um, a call or a next action or something that I'm using in queries. Uh, the the darker, not darker, but the grayer thing kind of reminds me that it's more logistical in my graph. There's one other way to page uh, create a page reference. You can have new page three and have two colons after it. The two colons will turn that into what's called an attribute, make it look bold, but all in all, this is still just a page. Uh, the last way to create a new page is up here in the search bar. You can either hit Control or Command U or click up here and we'll make new page four. You can see that's a new page, um, and that will also create a page. Notice this one has no references because I didn't create it by creating a reference. I created it by typing up here uh, in the uh, search bar. So uh, that's those are the ways that you can create pages. That's the general concept of a page. Let me briefly talk about how you would work with pages. So you can change page titles by going to the page clicking up in the title and changing the name. Now, I want to point out this is distinct from changing it, uh, changing what's in the double brackets. If I have new page here and I'm like, oh, I don't like the name new page, I'm going to change it to new page five. I have now created a thing called new page five, but the original new page still exists. So it now has no references. What's amazing about Rome is that when you change the titles, of a page, it actually brings the reference along with it. So if I say you want to change this title, I go to the page, I click on the title area, and then I actually change it up there. And having done so, you'll notice even the reference changed to new page six. New page five will now no longer exist. You can see it isn't that because its name has been changed to new page six. Let's say now that I'm like, ah, you know what? New page six and new page are really the same thing. Um, I, I want to merge those references to those pages together. All you have to do to do that is once again, change the title. If I change this back to new page, Rome is going to realize that new page already exists and ask me if I want to merge them. I'm going to say I do. And now I have just the one new page. You can see it's got two blocks on it because it's combining the, the content of the pages, which was nothing. Um, but you'll notice now that the reference on the original page is back to being just new page. So we have successfully changed the name of the page and merged those two pages together. So very briefly, what we have here with pages, you can create a page um, in the search bar by just typing a page name you want, or you can do it in line with double brackets, with hashtags, 
or with attributes. And functionally, those are all the same. There are some subtle things you can do with attributes, and, and hopefully there's some new functionality down the road for attributes. But for right now, effectively, those accomplish the same thing. They reference the page in the context of some of whatever content, can, content they are in. Um, and the, the thing to know about pages overall is that they are either where content lives or they serve as a hub for that content to uh, be brought in with the linked references. Uh, and that's not an, an exclusive or. It can be both. You can have content on a page and it's still serving as a hub. And most of my pages, uh, project things and that kind of stuff are exactly like that. And last, if you want to change a title, you can't just do it by changing what's in the double brackets. You have to actually be on the page and change what's on, what, change it from the top of that page. And that's how pages work in Rome Research. If this video helped you, click subscribe. And check out my Rome courses as well. I have The Roman Way, which is a free course to help you learn the fundamentals of Rome research. I have AP Productivity, which is my flagship Rome course. It is an eight-week live cohort course to help you get important work done in Rome research. I have Powerful Task Management in Rome Research, which helps you build a GTD-style setup for task management in Rome. And I have Your Road to Rome, which I'm actually updating in November or December of 2021. Uh, and it is a deeper dive than the free course, The Roman Way. Uh, it has live masterclasses, Q&A sessions, additional instruction about Rome extensions, especially smart blocks, and Rome 42, which you can get from RomeJS.com. And there's a community forum for discussion of new Rome features or help with your workflows. Rome Research is an amazing tool, and I want to help you make the most of it in your life and work.